Uh, you're going to find the same complement of soles on all of our apparatus. Uh, for, the part, for the most part, we use steel products, so we'll have a steel chainsaw uh, used for cutting roof, wood, common materials, and then we have a steel cage bolt sole. So what I want to do is kind of go through each one of these individually to help familiarize you with the later day. Okay, so the first piece of equipment we're going to talk about is the steel chainsaw. Um, this is pretty versatile in that we use it for a lot of multiple tasks on the fire grounds. Probably the key being uh, vertical ventilation or ventilating the roof. So before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about just a visual inspection and some basic components of this saw. Um, this saw is designed to be an easy pull start. Um, and when you do your visual inspection, you're actually going to be checking all the things that we're talking about this morning. So the first thing you're going to do is pull this out of the compartment of the truck and you just want to do a quick once over to make sure there's no significant leaks, um, you know, you don't have anything broken, busted, any missing screws, bolts, nuts, anything like that. Um, so what I will do at this point, once I realize that everything seems to be intact and in working order, is uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove or slide back our chain guard. Now this acts as a depth guard for when you're actually cutting a hole in a roof. Um, it's going to allow you to mindlessly cut to a certain depth. This is going to dictate how deep your blade is going to go in. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go ahead and just loosen this up. And you'll see that this slides back and exposes the chain. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you again to set whatever depth you need. For the purpose of our visual inspection in the morning, we want to slide it all the way back and expose as much of the bar and the chain as we can. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a visual inspection on the chain. And what you're looking for with this is you're looking for chain direction first off. You want to make sure that you have the chain going in the right direction, otherwise the saw will be completely ineffective. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a shark fin um, followed by a chisel. And what this is designed to do is this shark fin is designed to spread the wood or material that you're cutting to allow the chisel to sink in and actually cut that material. So again, you want to make sure you lead with the rounded edge to spread the material and then followed by the chiseled edge to actually cut that material. So as long as we're rotating like this, again, smooth round edge first and then chisel second, that blade is going to rotate and it's going to be effective. If you have it flipped around, you'll be hitting a dull edge followed by a dull edge and it's not going to perform the right task. So once we verify that the chain's on correct and the bar guard slides back and forth just like you want it to. Everything's okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to check our chain tension. And in order to do that, there's a couple different methods. One method is um, a little bit more by feel. And that method would mean to see how tight you can get this chain and still rotate it by hand. So you should be able to pull it and it should be pretty tight. You're going to meet some resistance with that. Not too loose and not unable to move. The next one and probably more practical one, the one that I use and you'll probably find yourself using more, is called the bowstring tight method. So essentially for this, what you want to do is you want to remove this cover all the way. And in order to do that, you're going to spin out this uh, wing nut here and you're going to slide this completely off. What that's going to do is it's going to expose you to more of the bar and more of the chain. At this point, you're going to take the chain about at the midpoint, usually right around the L and the steel logo, and you're going to pull downwards. What you want to be able to do is apply pressure to that and have the grooves of the teeth not completely come out of the bar. So to show you what I mean, it should look something about like that. That's called bowstring tight, and that's just a quick, down and dirty, easy way to check that chain tightness. So now that we've gone through the depth guard, uh, the chain and bar, direction and tightness, let's talk about some of the functional features of this saw. Uh, a couple things that you have on here is going to be a steel all-purpose tool. This is going to be used to do things like remove your spark plug, tension your chain, tighten your bar. So you want to make sure that this is intact and with the saw. Over here, a couple things you want to check on the bar, kind of moving from front to back, is you want to check to make sure that these two uh, nuts are in the right place, because those are what's securing your bar to the actual uh, saw. If you needed to adjust this blade, 
It's as simple as two steps. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to loosen these two nuts. And that's going to loosen the tension on the ball. And the bar is this piece here. And it's going to allow it to slide back and forth, which is then going to tighten or loosen your chain. So you'll notice on here that there's a directional arrow. And on this directional arrow, there's a plus sign. Plus meaning tighter chain. So you can then take the flathead part of this tool, and you're going to drop it into the slot. And you'll feel it latch into the chain tensioner. So at this point, you can then modify the tightness of your chain by either turning it clockwise or counterclockwise. Once you've reached a desired tension, then you're going to re-secure these two nuts to lock your bar into the, to the right length and right chain tension. And once you do that, you can then re-perform your bowstring test or your chain slide test. Moving on up from there, you have your chain lock or your safety brake for this. Um, if you click it towards you, you'll hear that. That's What that's going to do is that's going to allow your chain to rotate freely. This is going to be important when you're starting the saw. When you're maneuvering the saw while it's running, it's very important to have that in a locked forward position. That's not going to allow this chain to rotate. So we just want to make sure that this actuates and it works properly. From there, you're going to look at the back of the saw. You want to make sure nothing's broken or impeding. This is going to be your throttle trigger or your gas. And then you've got a four position switch here. You've got stop, run, half choke, and full choke. And we'll go through that a little bit more when we talk about the functionality and starting this saw. One last thing I do before that is I check my fluids. All steel products are designed to run with a gas and oil mixture. Uh, it's, they're two-stroke motors, and they run at a 50 to 1. We have uh, pre-portioned packages that we'll use for mix. You're going to find a mix can and a bar oil can located in the same compartment as the salts. So you open these up, give them a half turn, and basically you want to check your levels of fuel and your levels of bar oil. So the rear one is fuel, it has the fuel and oil sign on it, and the front one is going to be your bar oil. It actually has the uh, symbol of a chain with a drop of oil on it. Now, the way steel are designed uh, from their chain soles is that they're designed to run through a tank of bar oil at the same rate that it runs through a tank of fuel. So you know if you're adding fuel, you need to be adding bar oil. So those are two things that you want to check. They're designed to use them at the same rate. So every time you top off the fuel, make sure you top off the bar oil. Again, it's very rare that you're going to go through a full tank of either. But like anything else, we'd like to start with a full tank on both counts. So make sure you check your fuel and you check your bar oil. From that point, uh, basically we're going to move into functional starting of this saw and we'll get to that. But before we do that, let's talk about the other saw that we carry on our apparatus, and that's going to be the rotary saw, uh, better known as a K-12. Okay, so the, the next saw that we carry, and uh, probably a little bit more versatile of a saw, is going to be our rotary saw, um, commonly referred to as a K-12 saw. This is also a steel product, so like the chainsaw that we spot, talked about earlier, it's going to run on a steel mix that is 50 to 1, a uh, mix of fuel and uh, oil. So with this, you've got a couple different options because you've got different blades that can be put on here. Uh, the blade that we keep on here is considered the, it's called the extractor blade, and it's probably the most versatile of all blades. It's going to be able to cut through many common items, concrete, metal, shingles, glass, things of that nature. So it's kind of a catch-all, and that's why our first blade that we, that we leave on these pieces is that extractor blade. We also have cement blades, metal blades, specialty blades, if you know that you're going to be working on that. So we'll get into changing the blade in just a second. Before we do that, let's go through the visual inspection of this. What you want to do, again, is make sure nothing appears to be broken or missing. Uh, you want to make sure that everything's intact, all your wing nuts are there, your throttle works um, freely without any obstruction, and you want to make sure that your blade rotates freely. You want to make sure that it has no wobble, 
it doesn't appear to be hitting anything inside of here and that it's on there good, good and tight. So before we move any further, let's talk about uh, changing this blade. That's what gives this saw its versatility. So depending on the blade type, there's gonna be slight modifications to how you change it. But with that being said, the generalized uh, concept of this is you wanna lock this blade into place. So you're gonna take one of your tools and you're gonna brace it between the housing shield of this blade and the teeth of the blade. That's gonna allow it to stay still as you loosen the nut on top. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll loosen the nut and you're gonna break that free. Once you break that free, you'll find that this is gonna spin out and you've got a retention spacer that goes here and this nut will spin all the way out. Now that's attached and it's got alignment pins in there. You'll notice you have alignment pins and a bushing here. So at that point, that frees this blade up to be removed. And it's as simple as that. So just a real quick down and dirty, if we need to switch a blade, that's how you're gonna do it. Now to reinstall that blade, um, this blade is not directional. Some blades are, they'll be marked as such. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this back inside this guard. You're gonna make sure that it drops down and seats below that bushing. Then you're gonna take your washer and retention, and you're gonna make sure that it, again, seats down in and those grooves fall in. Now you can bring this nut in to hand tight, and you're gonna perform the same task as you did when you removed it, just in an opposite fashion. So lock that down, and place this in here and we'll tighten this up. And this needs to be pretty snug. You don't want it so tight that it's gonna break, but you want it relatively snug. Now that we've talked about the soles, basic visual inspection and operations, how to change blades, how to check tension, let's talk a little bit about starting the soles. Okay, so before we actually start these saws, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing when we start these. Uh, the way steel designs their saws, and really any small motor for, for that matter, is um, a sequence of steps to actually have the right fuel and air mixture to start this saw. So just conceptually a little bit, let's talk about what's happening when you start this saw. Um, if you've been around at all, you've seen people pull and pull on a saw and flood it and not be able to start it. Fortunately, there's kind of a fail safe for this method if you follow the correct steps. So let's walk through what happens a little bit. Um, let's talk about some of the gauges. Obviously, this is your run stop switch and you wanna make sure that you're in the run position. It's noted right here, down would be stop, run would be up. The next thing we wanna talk about is our choke and our throttle and what they do and how they act inside the carburetor. The reason why we're using the K12 or rotary saw for this is because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so the choke, basically what that does is just what it says. It chokes the air out of your carburetor. So when you put your choke on, essentially you're closing off all the air that's gonna flow into this engine and carburetor. So the only thing you're left with at that point is fuel. So when you choke this, you're gonna then pull the lever to introduce fuel into this system. Again, you're choking off the air. You're closing a flap that eliminates airflow. So when you pull the lever, all you're introducing is fuel. Your throttle is kind of the polar opposite. What it is doing is introdu introducing air into the system. So again, think about it. Your choke is going to introduce fuel. Your throttle is going to introduce air. So in concept, when you start this, it's going to be a series of four pulls on the handle. Your first three pulls are going to be with the choke on. What that's going to do is it's going to restrict your airflow. So on your first three pulls, you're simply introducing a certain amount of fuel to the engine. Once you do that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn your choke off 
which is opening up the air passage. Next, you're gonna lock the throttle into wide open position. And to do that, you're gonna squeeze the throttle and press in on this lock key. You're gonna let go of the throttle and then let go of the lock. I'll show you that again. You're gonna squeeze the throttle, press in on your lock key, and release the throttle and release the lock. So essentially what you've done now is with your first three pulls, you've introduced fuel only. So now we have a surplus of fuel and we need to introduce air. So we've now opened our choke and opened our throttle to maximize the airflow. At this point, when you pull this and introduce your spark, you're going to have the perfect air to fuel ratio to start this motor. And that's going to work for any small motor, but steels are especially sensitive to that air fuel mixture. Too much fuel and it floods it out. Too much air and it won't start. So the concept is going to be the same whether you're dealing with the rotary saw or the chainsaw. And let's just get a look at a close up of the chainsaw real quick so you can see what those uh, switches and choke looks like. So if you see here, you've got a four position switch. Stop is gonna be all the way to the top. One notch down will be run. And then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lock the throttle and take it all the way down. It's gonna be full choke. So again, same concept, full choke. You're choking off the air, introducing fuel. You're gonna pull the, the handle three times, introduce a predetermined amount of fuel, and then you're gonna move this lever one click to release that choke. Now you're gonna let in the maximum amount of airflow and that's gonna cause this engine to start. So now that we've talked about what happens a little bit, let me demonstrate actually starting the saws. Okay, so now that we've talked our way through uh, the concept of what's happening when we're starting, let's actually put it in practical application. So with our chainsaw, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check and make sure that our bar lock is off and that's gonna allow us to start this saw with the least amount of friction. We don't have anything trying to stop that blade from spinning. So again, make sure that that's off and you're gonna bring it back towards you and you'll hear the click. Then what we wanna do is we wanna go down here to our four position switch. We wanna take it all the way down to the full choke position. And now we're ready to do our first three pulls on this saw. Again, those first three pulls are for nothing more than to get the proper amount of fuel inside the system. So when you're starting these saws, they have a high compression rate and you're gonna need to put some upper body strength into it. So what I like to do is kind of center myself over the saw. If you're able to stand up, I like to put my toe and my foot inside the saw handle and put my weight over top of the saw like this. That's going to kind of secure the sole in place as I pull up. So now we'll go ahead and do our first three pulls. And from that point, now that we've tried to start, we're going to go ahead and take our choke to the off position with our throttle remaining locked on. And now we'll pull the sole and it should start over relatively quickly. Okay, now that you've seen how it's worked on the chainsaw, let me show you how it works on the uh, rotary saw. Take for granted that these saws have been started already this morning during our daily checks, so they're gonna act just a little bit differently, but the process is still gonna be the same. So for this, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we're in the run position and we wanna turn our choke on. Again, that's choking off the air and it's gonna allow you to introduce fuel. So with the first three pulls of this, again, you're introducing fuel. Then you're gonna turn your choke off and lock your throttle into position. Now before we start this all, I wanna talk about warming them up properly and running them through their functions. So some of the things to think about is, you're starting a cold motor. So the last thing you wanna to do to this motor is immediately start revving up the engine. It's gonna to be too much abrasion on the metal pieces that are in there. So you wanna let it run at an idle for a good amount of time. This is gonna go for your rotary saws, your chainsaws, 
the fan, any small engine that you start, you want to let it run at idle and you want to let it warm itself up before you start increasing the RPMs. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this saw and it's going to start off at a higher RPM and we are going to then press the throttle and it's going to unlock it, which is going to let this drop down to idle. What you'd like to do is you'd like to let this idle for about three to five minutes to come up to operating temperature. Some of the things you can be doing during that three to five minutes is listening to the sound of the motor, making sure that you're not hearing any pinging, clanking, any abnormal sounds, uh, making sure the blade's not wobbling, things of that nature. With your chainsaw, you're going to make sure that the bar lock is operating the way it should. Um, you're going to make sure, again, you're not hearing any abnormal sounds, any chain wobble, or anything like that. So, why don't we go ahead and start this saw, and we'll go ahead and just let it run for a while. Wow. Again, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of center your weight over the saw, similar to what we did with the chainsaw, and we're going to give three pulls with the choke on. From that point, we're going to turn the choke off. We're going to lock our throttle into position, and this saw should start within the first or second. At this point, you want to let the saw idle. This is about the idle speed that you'll get. You want to let this go for about three to five minutes. You'll notice that there's some vibration. This is all normal sounds for this saw. And as you do this more and more, you'll get familiar with how your equipment should sound. Okay guys, so uh, just remember that this is a very fundamental, basic intro to these saws. These saws are as versatile as the person using them. So uh, what I want you to do is just have a ground level knowledge of how to do your visual and checks, get comfortable with starting the saws, with manipulating the saws and handling the saws, get used to their weight, things to look for, things that uh, seem normal, and things that seem like they may need addressed. If you come across something and you're not sure, before you try and start the saw, or before you operate the saw, make sure you get a hold of a senior firefighter, an officer, a lieutenant, somebody that would be more than happy to show you the functions of these saws. Uh, good luck and be safe.